Hello everybody, so the Push 3 was just announced and I got bombarded with inquiries if I would support the Push 3 as well and I finally could get my hands on a device and for sure I do support it now for Bitwig as well as for Reaper. And I have to say a bit thank you to Ableton for keeping this open, keeping this programmable, so we can also have fun with other doors, not only with Ableton, which is not always the case with other companies. To prepare for this video, I watch a lot of reviews of the Push 3, but I think I can add a lot of more information for you than there were in these videos. I think they were all done in some very short notice and there was not much criticism in there beyond the price. So price is something we need to talk about. You can also get this as a standalone version, which is quite interesting idea. But for the use with Bitwig, it makes sense to have only the controller, I guess, and the controller comes with a quite hefty price tag which is about 1000 of your currency and it also comes with an audio card. I want to do a separate video about the audio interface how this works with Bitwig and does it make any sense? So I will not dive too deep into that. But as I said, the price tag is pretty high, but I think it's a kind of reasonable if you think you get a full-blown MPE controller. And if you look into MPE controllers, they are normally above that price tag for only the MPE controller. And with that, you also get an audio interface, you get a controller for mixing and sequences and much, much more. Nevertheless, it's a hefty tag and if you don't have this use case to have everything in here, you can have better, cheaper alternatives. Also worth mentioning, Ableton only works with Mac and Windows, but also Bitwig runs on Linux and also the Push 3 works totally nicely on Linux with Driven by Moss. Just check out the installation notes. You need to give access to the device for the USB access. It's all documented in the Driven by Moss manual. But besides that, it works totally fine on Linux as well. Let's start with some pros and cons, which you did not hear in all the other videos. You see, it looks quite a bit different. So let's go through the differences and what advantages and also some disadvantages I think it brings in contrast to Push 2. The main thing is MPE, that you can now have MPE control on the pads, which we will dive in in a second. So just to mention that, but there are also some drawbacks to that. I think the first time I looked at it and still when I look at it, it looks a bit blurry. So in contrast to the Push 2, which looks very clear, it looks a little bit weird to look at these pads. I think the main reason is because you have also this white background here. So I'm not sure. And the pads, they don't give you any feedback. It feels quite solid and even more solid than the previous version. I think the main reason for that is because it's even more flat. So it's nearly no hate of these pads. So you can do the sliding on the pads. And even if you adjust the lighting, so you can see that if I go down here in the LED brightness, it's not really getting better. And yeah, I think even the, the older ones are a bit brighter than these ones. So moving on, very good news. No more sticky material on the device. If you have the Push 1 or Push 2, it's a nightmare. It gets sticky. The Push 1 had coating all over, so my Push 1 is sticky as hell and really ugly to touch. The Push 2 had it on the sides and on the back, even also a nightmare, which I had to do a very intensive cleaning with that. And with that one, it's all solid plastic, so nothing can get sticky on that. Also no coating on the knobs. So this is very, very nice to have. The display looks a little bit sharper than the old one, but it's also a bit darker than compared to the Push 2. So also check out if that is intensive enough. So you see, maybe I'm not sure if you can see it on a video. The white looks more like a little bit grayish and that's also the most intensive value. So if you go down, it even gets much darker, but this can also be adjusted here with the settings. Next one's the new knobs. I think there are a bit of an issue with them currently because they are very slow and I seem not to have any speed up if you turn them. So if you turn them faster, it's the same speed. So for example, if you see here, 
I change the master volume, you have to do quite some turns. I'm thinking about speeding that up, but it's the same slowness in Ableton. So I'm not sure if there will be a firmware update coming, which speeds them somehow up. So I will wait a little bit and see what happens with Ableton. But if this will not be the case, I think this needs some more speed on these knobs. They also can now be clicked, which is also a nice feature. I will show that in a second, what's the exact feature. You can have basically two functions at once, and that's nice to have. That's a little bit of a drawback of the position, I think. The other ones on a push two were always on the top here. And with that, you, for example, if you want to push something here, you pretty easily touch them by accident, and then the pop-ups show up and Anyway, it's a little bit sad. There is no grip at all at these knobs. Please don't do any coating in the next version. So for example, if you look here at the Electro one, I'm not sure if you can see that, they have really nice grip here on the side and they touch much better. And if, especially if you're in a geek and have sweaty hands, something like this is much, much nicer to touch. And they are also touch sensitive. So it's not an argument not to have such more solid knobs. And yeah, they feel, quite plasticky. So I would really love to have something like this here on the push, especially with a price tag of 1000 euro here in Germany. It's something I would like to see in future update, definitely. This knob, I think it's a little bit too big because it's somehow, even if I have very big hands, it feels a little bit weird, this large size knob. So a little bit smaller one would have been nice, but you can now move that to the side and you can also uh, push that as well and yeah, turn it for sure. So it gives you more navigation functions, which we also will see in a second. Yeah, the buttons feel a bit weird as well. I think they're pretty hard to touch. So if you do a shift combination, you have really pushed them hard. I, th I think it got a little bit better already. So this might be only if you need to use it for some weeks, maybe it gets better. But nevertheless, you have to put on quite some force and also the lighting, for example, if you see here, is not really full intensive and not really even. Yeah, could have been done a little bit nicer. Let's dive in. What are the differences? So we, I will not explain each and every function. There are tons of tutorials about push one and push two, which are basically identical, only that they shuffle around all the knobs and buttons in different positions. It's quite similar device. And so you can also watch my old videos and I will not show everything. I will show now you the differences between the old version, which might also give you an idea if it's worth upgrading to the push three or not. In my opinion, no, but that's already spoiler. Sorry for that. So what are the differences between the push two? So they moved around the, the buttons quite a lot. So you have here this normally editing buttons, which we had on the right, delete, quantize, double the loop and the duplicate one, which what now moved to here, which I think is a good idea. So have a more even distribution of the buttons. Next one we have here on the top, mute, solo and stop clip. So we have now a new one, which is a lock button, which means you can now lock down these three buttons. You know, you can mute the track, but you can also keep it pressed and then you will get this mute option for all the channels. So you can mute that one, that one, and so on. I also unmute it. And you could already, before with the push two, you can lock that if you keep the shift button pressed, you lock it. But now there's a dedicated button for that. So you can do lock button and mute, and that's a little bit quicker maybe, and you can do that with one hand instead of using the shift button. So you can lock all these modes. You can also lock here the stop clip one. This is also a new feature for the push two and the push one, which could not have this lock state before. So this is now also working. And for sure, you can also lock here solo and do then very quickly solo these channels as well. And if you press it, you can remove the lock again. The next one is on the old one, we had only a setup and a user button. We have this as well. So the setup is now this gear icon. You see, I accidentally touched here again, here this knob. We have here this gear icon for the setup and we have the user for the user mode. And let's check out what's here in the setup. These are the previous settings. There's now the new MPE settings I put in here as well, which we will look at in a second. And yeah, user is the same as user before, but there are also two new buttons. One will give you the project open 
the dialogue for the time being until there is more possibilities for the browser to also navigate project. That's a little bit of a weird one on Ableton. You get some help text. And so I do not really see the usefulness of that. What I did is I will open a browser here and show some learning resources of Bitwig. I'm not sure if this is helpful to anyone. If you have other ideas, just write me down in the comments about this weird button. But for this time being, you will be led to hear the Bitwig resources for learning Bitwig. And there are two other new buttons. One is that one, which does the catch MIDI. So if you played something, it will put this somehow in a clip in Ableton. This function is not yet available in Bitwig. So what I did with that is to create new scenes, which means let's first create some scenes. If you normally only press it, you will only get a new scene. But if you combine it with Shift, it will do the collect playing scenes and then you have here a scene with the, these two playing clips as well. When we have a save button, which is a nice idea, I think, so you can quickly save your project. And if you didn't save it before, you get the dialog, but if it's already stored, it will just do a save. And that's really helpful to have such a function. And for example, on the Mackey protocol, I use it a lot. And also on that device, it's a nice feature to have. More movement of buttons. So before we had the tap and metronome here on the top. And this is also something Ableton did now is have lots of icons. I am not sure if this is such a good idea to work with such icons. It's I think the text is much clearer. And we have the first knob movements. I prefer to have them on top here in this free space because as I said here, they somehow get in the way when you want to push these buttons above or here in between. You also have to go down like this on them. It's like this, so we have to cope with that as well. And the first one, so the tempo knob is now here, so you can change the tempo, still can combine it with shift to do detailed changes. What is new now that you can also press it, so all of the knobs can press, as I said, so if I press it, we will now be sent here to shuffle, and then you can change the shuffle value with that knob as well. And if you press it again, you are back to tempo. Next one got moved from the right to the left, which is the main volume knob for the master track. So that's now here. You can change here the master volume and also you can press that one. And if you press it, it switches to the Q volume and this can now be adjusted as well. Pressing it again, you're back to the master volume. And last but not least, we have this very big knob, which was before a small knob around here. It did change before that the play position. We have now this big one. It's very interesting to mention that in Ableton, you have absolutely no access to the arrangement. So you cannot even change the play position. And that's, I think it's pretty weird for such a controller. And maybe that's coming in the future. I don't know, but for the time being, it does not work. But here with Bitwig, we can change the play position. So let's go here in the project, but we are now, uh, yeah, let's stop playback and let's get rid of that one and show that one. And let's go back to the start. And here you can see if you move it, you can change the play position. You can also do it with shift in smaller quarter steps. This works again like before. But you can also move it to the left and the right. And what I did with that is a following so that you can see that better. Let's move a little bit the loop to here. And if you move it to the left and the right, you can now navigate between the loop and the project start and the project end. So if I push it now to the right, you will be sent to the beginning of the loop and click it again to the right. And if I click it again to the end of the project, so we don't have any clips here. Let's just pull out here a useless clip so you can see that. And so this is now the end of our project. And if we now click it again, we will be sent to the end of the project. And the same works in the other direction, so to the left, to that one, and to the start of the project. So I think this is pretty helpful. And even if you just push it, you can start playback, which is really nice. We can go to the start of the loop, push it, and you can have playback 
the loop. I think this is pretty handy and much faster than the hard to press play button down here. So this is really a nice addition and a great idea to put such a wheel up here. This has also other uses, which we also will see in a second, for example, in the browser. So let's move to here. Even they did not only add buttons, but also they removed one button. So before we had two dedicated buttons for adding devices and adding tracks, and now we have only one add button. There is also something like browse we had before, and this is now this one, which is more called like a preset exchange, but it's basically the same feature as if you would press the browse button on the push too. So for example, if you are here with the PolySynth and I would push that one, you get the new Bitwig 5 browser and you can select your presets. And as before, you can scroll the presets, but you can also use here the big, big wheel and you can go that here through the selections. You can also combine that, you can just touch that if you like the menu somehow. And you can also go to the other filter columns. So for example, if you want to filter the category, you can say you only want to have lead sounds. You can do the same with the wheel. So also change here the selected columns. So you could touch something and then change it with the wheel. Or you could also go to the left or the right to go to the filter columns and this speeds really the, the workflow up quite a bit. I only want to have yeah, dark leads and then we could go to the result and pick the first one and you can confirm it as well by pressing it. And we have a muted track, so let's unmute that. <laughs> Okay, so next one is here adding something, adding the track or a device there. I had to get a little bit creative because we got rid of one button and we have only one instead of two. So if I press it now, we end up with a menu. We had before already in my implementation presets which you can select in the settings. If you go to the controller settings of the push, three, you will see all these different favorites you can set for instruments, audio tracks, effects, and now also devices. And this is now seven options you have for all types. So this is a little bit like before. So I have now instrument templates. Pressing one of these adds a new track. Let's check that out. Maybe let's get rid of some tracks so you can better see that. If you want to add an empty track, you can just go here or use one of the presets we have here, for example, add a drum machine track. And you can switch then to audio here. You also get an empty audio track or you can have this pre-configured one devices on the track. And the same for the effect track. For example, you can store here a chorus track or reverb, your favorite reverb. So this is quite a speed up for the workflow to quickly add a track with your favorite effects and instruments on that. And how do you now add a device? So I added here this new option. You can have this one and there you can also have your favorite devices here. Can be instruments or can be effects. For example, let's add here another Hyatt, which doesn't make any sense, but here you normally would put more like reverb or a delay or something in here. The other option is to go to the browser as before. So if you go to the first selection here, you will end up in a browser and then can also select here your favorite device as before. So next one is we had before device, mix and clip. And these are new, you know, tiny little buttons up here. And I think this is really a step back from the previous version because these are buttons you use all the time. You always want to go to the mixer or to the device editing. And for that, you always have to concentrate and think, where is that? Ah, what does it mean with the weird logo? Okay, so this is the mixer or you could get to the device. Okay, I guess you get used to it, but it's, uh, I preferred the previous large ones, but okay, I understand they had to make space for this nice knob, but there's still lots of space up here, so you could have kept the old size without any issues. Same for here, you could also have here four large buttons instead of these small ones. But 
Okay, it's how it is. Um, so these other icons, this one is the clip editing. We don't have one um, selected. And the last one is a new one, which we will look at now. So we had before already the normal play view and we had the session view. Oh, by the way, I forgot that. So this browser feature here, this new browser feature is also available on the push two and the push one. So we can also store now seven different presets for these three track types also on the previous push versions. So, but back to here, this works like before. And there is, but also a similar icon up here. And this is a, quite a nice addition because I already had this feature before. If we go here to the clip view and you press it again, you have these different settings. And I also did rework these quite a bit because I did not make too much sense before. It was a little bit hard to understand. So you can basically select what is shown down here in the session mode and you can select what is shown up in the display. So down here you have your normals, your clips. You can flip them and you can also show scenes instead. So you can show up to 64 scenes and directly start the scenes by pressing them as well. And what you can now also do is show up here scenes or clips. This depends on the mode down here. So now I have scene select, so I will see scenes up here, but I could also go back to the normal clip view and then I see the clips up here. And if you give them a name, you will also see the names that's as before. So if we give that here a little name, yeah. Klaus, why not? <laughs> so here we see also now the name. And yeah, and the third option is uh, to show the mixer instead. And you can still, be, as before, activate marker view. And this is also remembered. So if you switch back here to the play mode and go back, you will still have your mode as before. And to quickly change that, not so you don't have to go into that menu, you can use now this new button up here. So we can switch between this clip view and the mixer view by pressing this button. So, but last but not least, the biggest feature Able and bragged about is that they have MPE. What does MPE mean? It's not so easy to wrap your head around that. We had MIDI 1.0 and now there's MIDI 2.0, but it's still in the works is <laughs> to a bit. And in between, there was this idea, we want to have more expression. We want, for example, to pitch bend individual notes. That's one of the idea and also modulate individual notes and not all at once. And this is why they came up with this little bit weird protocol on top of the normal MIDI 1.0. It uses all the MIDI channels to do this trick. So you can play up to 50 notes with that and it will send on the different MIDI channels here in this case, MIDI channel 2 to 16. It will send each note on a different channel and also send the pitch band for this channel but it also can send channel pressure and control change 74, which normally is filter cutoff for each node individually. We also need to explain the setup thing because it really takes a bit to wrap your head around it. So in the setup, you can also turn it off. So we have now MPE. So you could, uh, let's have something which we can hear. Let's go back to that one. <laughs> Uh, but you can also turn it off if you don't want to have MPE. <laughs> then you have the previous behavior or turn it back on. Let's maybe go to back to the very simple init sound because it's really nice for demonstration purposes. So here we can play now with multiple fingers. Sounds not interesting, but we can go there in a second. So what you can do now, you can change individual fingers. And what surprised me first, I thought you can bend this somehow in all direction, but that's not working. You can only bend to the left and the right, which works fine for one finger, but I think it's a little bit limited if you play multiple ones because, you know, you can, there is the, the other finger and you cannot do something like this or, yeah, you know, it's, it's complicated. So it's nice for having one finger 
It's also a problem if you play here. You cannot go down. Eh? You can only go up. And the other thing is, yeah, with multiple fingers, it's 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 a bit limited. So there are better MPE controllers which solve this in a better way. But if you grid, I think that's what you can get. So what are the other settings? You cannot only pitch bend, you can also modulate. And this is pressure as before, but it's poly pressure. You can, uh, it's actually channel pressure on 15 channels, but you can pressure each pad. And you can also do this filter kind of thing by moving the finger to the top. And that's the reason why you cannot bend to this note, because you will modulate if you move your finger. And to hear that in Bitwig, you need to use this expression module here. It's already here, but you can add that to any synthesizer you want. So the expression here is available for any slot. Get rid of that one. And what you need to understand is that the pressure is this pressure thing here, and the filter cutoff gets mapped to this timbre parameter. So for example, let's say, we want to open the filter with pressure. So let's map that to fully opening the filter. Let's check that out. So as you hear, you can do that individually, but you can also use the movement. So if you want to use the movement, maybe let's move that, uh, map that here to timbre. Let's crank the resonance fully up. And if I put now my finger on here. You see, I can, can open up the resonance then as well. And this is now depending on the setting. So these settings are here. The location is now finger. So which means I can bend from the position I put the finger. The other thing is pad, which means I'm already bending. If I play up here, it will be fully open. If I play down here, it will be fully closed. So the resonance here, so, and I can move it up and move it down. So this one is a little bit of a difficult one because it depends on where you, where you hit the pad, but it might also be, be an advantage. And the other one is finger. So this then starts to modulate from where you put. Your finger is always a zero position. So if you put it down, you can do the same. But if you put it up, you can only go down then. And the other thing is the in tune. So if you do the pitch bend, the question is, is there already a bending happening on the pad? And this is where you set this up. So you can say, I use the full width because I had really problems playing with, with the smaller settings because it starts bending quite easily then. So you can put it down and then it's already... It's bending like crazy already. And here it's then a bit, a little bit slower. And the same is for the height. So this means when does this slight effect, this movement here with our ex with our timbre uh, on the resonance, how soon does this start to happen? So you can tweak this quite a little bit to your playing. Which one did I forget? So you can say you want to have pitch bend on each uh, pad. And this one is a bit weak setting, which is the fault that the bending is uh, to 48 semitones, but you can also change this up to 96. So which means it's So which means it bends much more, or you could also maybe say you only want 12. Then it bends not that much. Also reset works nicely here. So if you keep the lead, touch it, then it uh, resets to the default value. So much for MPE and Reaper works exactly the same with everything. So it will look exactly the same, though it's not really worth showing you the thing. You can also do MPE if you have MPE tune plugins in Reaper. So this is, should work as well then with Reaper. And what do you think? Tell me uh, your comments about what do you think of the Push 3? Is it too expensive? Does it make sense or not? 
does it make sense for you with Bitwig if you already have one and want to get ready? I'm looking for your response and maybe also some ideas what could be improved. I think there's still a lot of possibilities with the new wheel. I did not change a note editing using so far because it's also a little bit limited in Bitwig, but maybe there's also some ideas to improve that. And as I said in the introduction, I will do a separate video about the using the audio interface with Bitwig because it's possible to send out CV and there are some interesting options with that as well. And yeah, until next time, make some funky music with MPE. Yeah.